Hey friends, my name is Kim. I'm the Children and Young Adult Consultant with the Connecticut State Library here with another episode. We're, I decided we're calling them episodes like it's a podcast. Um, another episode of CT Pages. And today we are here with my old roomie, but once roomie is always roomie, Leah from Wallingford Public Library and Jane from the Wallingford Public Library. And they're going to tell us about some DEI initiatives they have going on, some local partnerships. Super timely. We're really excited to hear about it. Leah and Jane, please take it away. Tell us everything the world wants to know. Thank you, Kim, and thank you to the State Library for having us. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in. So when we talk about initiatives, usually with libraries, we think like, you know, short-term project or two, three years. But with this work, we feel that there is no, there is no end date. This is a this is as this is forever. This is forever work that we're doing, and it needs to be forever work. Um, and our intention as the library is to serve as a leader and a convener, so that we can create sustainable change in this in this community and as an organization. Um, so that's really it's a little bit intense, but that's what we're we're going for. Um, so I'll let you know a little bit about how this all got started. Obviously, in 2020, um, George Floyd was murdered, and that was June. And it was it was a time when there was this groundswell of, okay, we really need to do this work. Um, and you know, we kind of got started in the librarian way. We made a racial justice resource guide for people to do their own personal work. Um, because there was so much information floating around at the time that it was a little overwhelming and we really wanted to do what librarians do best and kind of, you know, congeal is the wrong word, but it's the only word coming to mind right now. Um, everything into, um, into kind of a guide that people could really jump in, especially if they were beginners and start doing this work, hit the ground running. Um, at the same time, you know, we, and I was particularly um, inspired by the GARE report, which we all know about now. Um, to do that is at the same time we, we, inspired by the GARE report, we put together an internal DEI committee to figure out like what the library could do to change and better serve, actually better serve everyone um, and what that would look like. So we created this internal committee at the same time, the Wallingford Public Schools were putting together kind of, a lot of this is a blur now because, I mean, summer of 2020 and fall of 2020 was obviously a wild time for so many reasons, but um, they had put together this, this kind of group of different community leaders and we were talking about like, what do we do? What should we do? Um, that's where all this, you know, the work that the library was doing internally started to go out into the community um, in a really, intentional way. So that was happening at the same time. And then um, we started doing our own conversations on race. And we did them virtually, obviously. And I partnered with uh, Sharon Rivera, who was formerly of, uh, at the time, she was working for the Women and Family Center in Meriden. Um, and she and I started facilitating these conversations. We did all kinds of topics like, um, Oh, what did we do? <laughs> we talked about microaggressions. We talked about just uh, we we asked participants for um, feedback on what they wanted to talk about. You know, we we started having like 70, 80 people in these Zoom conversations and it was like a lot. Um, and then we started because we were working on kind of some projects with the schools, some of the teachers started to help us facilitate and it you know, we started building this community network. It was, in some ways, it was informal. In some ways, it was formal. Um, and it got bigger. <laughs> and when things get bigger and you're not fully prepared, it can kind of not spin out of control, but it, it can get tough. Um, and that's kind of what happened. We had some we had some in instances where we realized we really needed to be better prepared to do it, particularly the conversations on race, um, facilitating those conversations, because, you know, we were doing a lot of the work, but it, we weren't quite, like, prepared. 
Um, and that's kind of where this next thing that Jane's going to talk about comes in and, and really change the game, I think. Yeah, that's a, that's a great intro, Leah. Thank you. And this is hard work. Talking about issues of race and racism is, is challenging for, I think, all kinds of organizations. I was so grateful that Leah Farrell joined our staff here because she has a really nice way of talking about this and has really provided a lot of leadership for our library as we move forward with thinking about how our library can be more inclusive and equitable. And we also are fortunate to have a library board that really gets it and has built right into our strategic plan that we want to be a hub where all are welcome. And right in our value statements, we have diversity, equity, inclusion, and kindness as um, a major value for this library. So when we realized that we needed to be more prepared to help our community talk about issues around race and racism, we decided to take a pause. We're still, um, thanks to Leah, holding community conversations on race, but we focused them more on um, presenting about topics rather than saying, okay, we're gonna have 70 or 80 people contribute to a conversation because we, do feel we need to be more prepared. So we, thanks to a grant from the Napier Foundation, have retained a consulting firm of um, Drakes and Burton. It's Aqua Drakes and Katie Burton are the two principals. And they have been working with a group of um, some library staff and some community members to help us and some library board members to help us get the skills we need to lead those conversations so that if we do have people that are questioning, well, is equity and inclusion really that important in Wallingford? I mean, we don't really have a problem with this in our town, don't you? know, You can imagine how those conversations go and wanting to be really prepared. So we are working with um, Aqua and Katie right now to help strengthen our abilities to facilitate those programs and doing some sessions with, um, both in terms of um, helping us and guide those conversations, but then they're also facilitating and co-facilitating some of those public programs with us. So that's a big piece of what we're doing. And um, we also are working with our internal DEI committee and also working with our staff. Um, so that's another really important piece of this work. So we have been so impressed with the work of Drakes and Burton that we retained them to come and lead an all-day staff development day for us recently, where we talked about racism and how our library can become more of an anti-racist leader in town and help the town itself make some progress in this area. And Leah, I thought, I thought they did a really nice job with us. Um, they were awesome. And I think talking to colleagues after the fact, they were so jazzed <laughs> and i think it really they were really engaged in a way that i hadn't seen them before in this work and that was so so cool to see because we've been doing it for two years now but um to see them really get into it and and latch onto it was so cool yeah yeah and that's another thing like leah said this is forever work so it will be forever work with our staff as well so we had this terrific day with Drakes and Burton. We'll follow it up. We, we might actually have them come and help us work on some scripts so that if we're confronted with uh, racist comments while we're doing our work in the public, we have some, we understand where those comments are coming from and we have some ready responses. And we also recently licensed some content that we'll put on our internal niche academy, which is our where our staff training lives, um, some uh, anti-racist training for staff, which we will allow staff to watch, participate in on work time, and then come together to discuss this. So we're looking too about our resources and where you know we this needs to be a budget item. You know we we're, we're grateful that we have a grant that helped us uh, engage with Drakes and Burton, but going forward we don't want to count on soft money for this. This needs to be in the budget. And the last thing I'll mention, I'll turn it back over to Leah, is one thing we've struggled with is we really would like to, for our staff itself to, um, to be more diverse, to have more black and brown people on the staff of the Wallingford Public Library. And we have not made great progress there, despite our attempts to try to cast a wider net in recruiting staff, change perhaps the um, education requirements so that we get a bigger pool of candidates, change how we word our job ads, where we place them. So we're struggling with that and interested in learning from other libraries that may have um, 
done a better job with this. We're talking now about the possibility of a paid internship where we might um, be very deliberate about trying to bring in a person, um, a person of color or somebody from another um, marginalized background who may be able to join our team and help us um, to, to help us and that we may be able to, you know, maybe that person would like to go to library school. So an undergraduate paid internship that maybe then also includes um, um, a scholarship to library school. So that it doesn't necessarily mean they'll stay here, but if other libraries can can do this, then we may be able to increase the um, increase the number of people who are joining our profession and make it more diverse too. So this is one thought that we're working on. Leah, what else have we forgotten to talk about? So much, I'm sure. But um, we another thing we're doing is, you know, one of our ultimate goals in in this work, um, particularly with collaborating with uh, Drake and Burton, is to set up some kind of community coalition uh, coalition for anti racism. Um, and you know, because we don't want the library to be the be all and end all for anti-racist work in this town we want it to we want to support the community in doing the work um and and what does that look like so we are partnering with the so the people taking part in our facilitator training are um you know community leaders community members um and trying to how do we give them the tools to go out and, and continue this conversation and continue this work outside the library's walls, outside the library's purview? Um, you know, we don't, I think it's important for people, especially institutions who are starting this work or have been doing it a little bit and are feeling a little discouraged to know, like Jane said, it's hard, it's long-term, it's the longest term. And, you know, there's not one right way to do it. You just have to do it and sometimes you're going to screw up and i think as librarians sometimes we struggle with that like the thought of screwing up i know i do um but you, you just have to do it and um even starting in small ways so you i don't know we're not giving a prescription on how to do it this is this is kind of the semi-organic way that it happened here um and you know it might be different for your community it might be completely different, but as long as you're doing it and you're doing it with intention and really, you know, finding finding the resources like, you know, we consider uh, Drake's and Burton a huge resource, finding the right resources that work for your community and running with that. So that's my advice. <laughs> that is great advice. I there's so there's so much to to say and ask and I don't even know where to start. But I think one thing I'm I gracious this is a conversation. I hate to call it a hot topic or like a hot conversation that's happening in libraries because that like feels yicky, but it is um, at least here in the state of Connecticut. So I think one of the things that I'm wondering is y'all mentioned um, the the type of work or sort of like what, what you're doing internally with librarians, what types of things are you hoping to do internally? Or I guess what kind of um, knowledge are you hoping to share just sort of with staff members that um, I guess will sort of change the, I love that kindness was added into your, um, into your mission statements and things like that. So I guess just like what kind of work are you hoping to um, impart with your internal staff? So I think uh, um, a lot of it has to do with feeling comfortable talking about issues of race and racism. It, I think many of us are afraid we're gonna say the wrong thing. And so um, being able to, and, and also to talk about, um, you know, some members of our public have this idea that libraries should be neutral spaces. Um, that comes up a lot. And what, what I have found myself recently saying is that libraries, public libraries have never been neutral, right? I mean, the standard around which our collections and our displays and our programs have been built is very much a, a white, a straight, uh, cisgender Christian. That's been the standard around so much of the history of public libraries. So to understand that and to be able to say that we're not looking necessarily at 
um, being equal. Um, we're, we're really looking at equity and about how we might lift up the voices of people that have been historically marginalized by public libraries. And so to help the staff understand that and be comfortable talking about it so that if they are posed with those questions, even if they're you know, outside of the library and they, that they have some comfort level talking about it and have some understanding, you know, people who come at us with um, points of view that we don't agree with or with really racist points of view, some of those are very thought out comments and responding to them can be really intimidating. So we want to understand how those comments are derived so that we can counter them and feel comfortable with it. And I think that's a big piece of what we're going to focus on with the staff training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that's huge. And then there's all the practical things like just like Jane mentioned, displays and collection development and, you know, being intentional, again, about uplifting and showcasing, you know, marginalized identities um, in every department. So, you know, and displays in our social media, um, you know, and we, we do get complaints about that, but it's, that's what we're learning to roll with. And, push back against um because again like Jane said we're not it's not about it, it's not about um neutrality and equality it's about equity because yeah it's just not this has not been a world that um and still isn't a place where marginalized people are given the same treatment as um straight white male cis everything western <laughs> um so that's it, it's not always um, easy to do because I feel like it, that thing about neutrality has been so hammered into our heads. But I think with because we have so much support from Jane and from our um, from our management team and from our board, it makes it so much easier. We we feel empowered to do these things um, the right way. I love that. Um, Jane, you mentioned, I believe, the importance of giving staff members time to do things like your niche academy training on the clock, mm -hmm. because it's work that is, I mean, that will, if, you know, sort of accepted appropriate, bleed out into like, you know, dinner table conversations, but it's, it's work for work. Do you find that hard to do? Like, I know Wallingford's sort of a larger staff, but, um, you know, sort of giving people time to do these trainings, you know, it's kind of like a, on the clock, it's kind of like um, you're advocating for walking the walk and not just talking the talk. Do you find it hard to sort of manage that? It, it definitely can be a challenge. Um, our frontline staff have very little time off, off desk, as we say, at yeah. so many libraries, right? So what we've needed to do and will continue to do is to say that, um, you, you know, come in early or stay late, not necessarily expecting people to be able to leave their public service work to do this, but allowing extra time for it and be willing to, to put that into the budget so that we can afford to do that. Yeah. I love that. Um, we could probably be here all day, which is not, I mean, I could, what do I have? I don't know. I'm sure there's something else in my schedule for me to do later today. But I think one of the questions, and it's probably an unfair question. So like, feel free to just turn off your, your, your whole Zooms and walk away. But one of the sort of common statements, questions, I'm not even sure how to phrase it that I see on listservs. And even in like the, the like diversity audits and sort of inclusive workshops that I do for Connecticut and sort of like the Eastern Standard Time Zone, a lot of people just kind of say like, well, well, what do you, well, like, well, what do you do? Well, how do you do it? Well, where do you start, right? It sort of seems like the journey towards working toward a more inclusive and accepting library space is so big that people just don't move at all. And I think it is understandable for people who haven't kind of had to live that life, right? You know, like talking about race and race relations and inequity for some people is not hard because they've been doing it since they could talk, right? Um, and it's, but the library structure 
is not such that most of the people working in it have had to sort of do that for their entire lives. So I think it's very understandable that some people are so frozen by the idea of having to do such a big thing. And right, there's 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 only quote unquote only so much that we can do, right? Um, we can't we can't change laws. I'm putting exclamation points about this because like the more I think about it, the more I'm not convinced that's true, quite <laughs> frankly, right? Like, I don't know, man. Um, so I, I'm just sort of wondering if you have any, any words, and I'm sure the words are like, just do it, right? Like, um, but I, I don't know for the directors or team leaders or folks out there um, who, who were like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. Like, how do you, right? Once they've had me do the diversity audit workshop or once they've watched the recording, like what's the next step for people? I don't, I don't know if there's any advice there. I know how unfair. No, no, I, I actually have a lot to say. I just didn't, I wanted to give Jane the chance first because she's my boss. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think a great place as libraries and librarians to start is the GARE report. It's, it's, it, it frames it in a library context. And I think that that's super important because uh, that's where I started. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, white. Um, and uh, it really helped me see like, oh, so this is, you know, this is how libraries are upholding white supremacy or this is, you know, these are some of the options that we could do. From there, I'd say, you know, I, I can't speak for if you don't have support from your administration or from your board, but um, you know, get a couple people who are interested in this work and start talking about it, whether they're community members or even your friends, like start to learn. You have to learn, especially if you are not from a marginalized identity or you know, you especially um, as a white person, like you have to learn and start understanding, you have to understand like the vocabulary, you have to, um, I'd say consume media. I, I like to tell people to start it in the way that appeals to them. Like, do they like podcasts? Okay, start listening to Code Switch or listen to the 1619 Project. Um, do you like YouTube, you know, um, do Emmanuel Acho's videos because he's gorgeous and he's really amazing. Sorry, <laughs> had to toot his horn there. You can be both. Uh, you can be gorgeous and amazing and you deserve accolades for that. Um, or I don't like to read, I know. <laughs> but <laughs> so, but if you do, you know, there's so many books out there um, and there's so many resource lists. Like uh, go to the ALA page, see what they're suggesting people do. ALA is there for, to guide us, you know, it's the American Library Association. They don't always do the right thing. They haven't always done the right thing, but they, they, when they do, they're, they really push for it and they have a lot of information out there. Um, and don't put pressure on yourself to do it all at once. I think like, I usually feel like when I go to a conference, I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that. So I'm terrible. <laughs> It's my own problem but you know I think a lot of us think like oh why am I not doing that or why am I not doing that it's like you have to do what works for you and what works for your community because that's the only way it will be sustainable and that's going to evolve over time it's going to change it's going to there's ebbs and flows and you're not going to be perfect you just yes you do have to just do it but there are ways to just do it that are a little more mm, approachable and organic I think that was great, Leah. And I think um, it can be really easy to get stuck in the, I'm going to educate myself phase for a really long time. And for me, so I've been reading about race and racism for years. And um, But for me, I needed to find some people in the library and in the community that wanted to do more than just learn about it. Um, and Leah's one of those key key people. And so that has really helped to, to find the people who will be part of going forward. And even if it just starts with conversations with those people and then some planning. And you know, we have a strategic plan, but we think we also need to have um, a separate plan on a separate DEI plan for the library. I started working on that and I was like, wait a second, I'm working on this in a vacuum. This is not how it goes. We need to have a lot of input into this plan. So that's what we're doing. And you are gonna make mistakes. You're gonna say stupid things. I say stupid things often. It's not okay, but it, it's part of the process because if you are too afraid to screw up or say something stupid, then you're never gonna do it. And it's really, it's, it's not 
fun work. It's exhausting, as Jane said, and it's uncomfortable, but that's, that's the way it is. That's how it has to be done. And we're not doing it. Another thing I want to say is that, like, don't do it because you want the library to look good or you want to look good. Do it because it's the right thing. You don't necessarily, like, the community should know what you're working on, but don't use it as, like, a selling point for yourselves because that's, that's something I feel strongly about. You know, it's it's important. You should let the community know that that's what they're doing because you want to make sure that they know that you are working towards making it a more equitable equitable and welcoming space for them. But it's not about rah, 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 the library. Um, it's because it is absolutely the most important thing that you're doing right now. That's like the perfect place to end. I could ask you a bajillion more questions, but like, you know, I'll maybe later. Um, thank you so much, Leah and Jane. I think this is exactly the kind of thing we, we as the state needed to hear um, because it, it can be so debilitating, but it seems like the work that you all began, like you said, was sort of organic and necessary. And I don't even remember how we found out about this, but but like, you know, like you said, Leah, you're doing it because it needs to be done, not so you can be like, look what Wallaford's doing, um, which like you also should just sort of shout to the world that you're doing this great work, but maybe we'll go ahead and do it for you um, with the CT Pages, not podcast, although in my soul, it's a podcast. Um, so thank you guys so much for your time and for the work that you're doing. Um, I think everyone could take a page out of your books because this is, this is important and necessary. So thank you guys for being here. Oh, thanks for inviting us.